Hi everyone. Today we're going to diagnose and troubleshoot a problem. Let's see if you can figure it out. All right, it's not something that you see. It is something that you hear. Let me give you another hint. Did you figure it out yet? Were you screaming at me to make it stop? When it's making that kind of chirping sound, it's either the belt or the idler pulley has gone bad, the tensioner. So what we're gonna do today is replace it. We got the car pulled in and now we're getting set up on the lift by the way this is a 1995 chevy caprice station wagon the procedure is the same for 94 through 96 b body platforms that would include the chevy caprice impala ss buick roadmaster cadillac fleetwood and so on so you don't have to do this job on a lift but you kind of do when you're filming it. <laughs> I think the shots are gonna be much easier for me to get to, so let's get started. It can be accessed from the top side under the hood. You just gotta stretch yourself down to be able to reach to this lower tensioner pulley. But jacking it up or putting it on a lift does kind of make it easier to get to. Here's all the parts and the tools that you should need to do this job. There's a 10 millimeter socket here. That'll get the bolts out of the tensioner housing. There's a 13 millimeter socket. That'll be used to loosen the slack on the belt tension. A short extension. A long reach ratchet. And that guy is needed to get to take tension off the belt. You could use a breaker bar on a regular or a regular ratchet with a pipe. This new tensioner needs a 15 millimeter. I think that's a 15. Let's look. Yeah, that's a 15 to release its tension. Different size than the stock one. There's a Goodyear Gator back belt, serpentine belt. There's the part number. I bought that belt years ago on clearance. I don't know if the numbers have changed. And here's the aftermarket tensioner part number. Now, granted, I got this on clearance too. You can tell it's been a while because of the way it reads here. I don't think that's the case anymore. Also for comparison, here is an old tensioner from another car. You can see it's metal. I prefer the metal ones just by aesthetics. They perhaps last longer. You could probably press the bearings out of these and put new ones in, but see, that's not why we're doing this. I believe the reason the belt gets squeaky is not because mechanically the pulley failed, but yet the spring tension has gotten soft on the tensioner. And once the spring tension gets soft, that's when the bell starts chirping and getting noisy. So I wouldn't even bother trying to rebuild these stock ones. Because chances are the spring tension just isn't strong enough anymore. They've just worn out. I've never tried to transfer a metal pulley over to these plastic style tensioners. That's possible if you really want like a 
a true restoration and have it look as close to original as possible, that might be an option. It's hard to say if that'll work. If you try it and it works for you, put a comment down below and let me know. So yeah, this is a 15 millimeter. That one's a 13 or a half inch. Let's take the tension off this belt. So you want to rotate it down. I guess that's a clockwise direction. And as you do that, you should be able to slip it off the uh, crankshaft. and then gently let the tensioner spring back. And we're gonna be changing this belt later, so. Okay, let's remove the bolts from the tensioner, holding it. These are 10 millimeter bolts. Counterclockwise to loosen. Stop that. Right, just like that. The bearings on this one seem okay. Maybe a little growly. No, no, not too bad. So this is rebuildable perhaps someday if I can transfer it over to a different style spring tensioner, the newer style. The threads on these bolts are rusty. Might want to go over them with a wire brush. This housing is aluminum. These ones are okay. I'm just gonna hit them with a paper towel, maybe some brake cleaner real quick. Another thing that's a good idea is you may want to check these mating surfaces here, these bosses here and the opposite one on the other side here. Wipe any dirt, or rocks, rust, whatever might be trapped in there. Because the new tensioner needs to go right up against there and sit flush. And you don't want dirt and grit and rocks and rust making your tensioner sit crooked. Okay, next step is let's throw the new tensioner in. I've prepared these bolts. I've cleaned them and prepared them with some anti-seize compound. Now these are aluminum bosses. I often wondered why there's two different types of anti-seize. There's uh, copper and then there's silver. 
colored ones. I think the silver colored ones are alum for aluminum. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the right thing here and use the copper stuff. Because I don't have the silver stuff right now, I ran out. <laughs> started by hand. If you're doing this top side, you got to do a lot of feeling around with your fingers because you're not going to be able to see this very well. Use your fingers, use your eyes. Sometimes you got to do that a lot when you're working on stuff. Reinstall. Okay. Torque setting for these. 18 foot-pounds. 25 Newton meters. Since it is aluminum, this is one of those cases where you could you could do the elbow torque wrench click, but since this is something that you might have on and off the car a couple times in its lifetime, it's probably a good idea to use a torque wrench just so you don't damage the threads. Do not pay attention to this torque spec that is mentioned here in the instructions that come with the new tensioner. 35 foot-pounds is way too much. I got the 18 foot-pounds or 25 Newton meters from the factory service manual. I'm going to initially seat this with just a regular ratchet. Because my click type torque wrench that has a ratchet mechanism on it is out of commission right now. Needs recalibrated. So until I do that, we're going to use a good old fashioned standby. All right, 12 point socket works better because you can reset it at much smaller increments. So if you're using a regular torque wrench, a six point's fine. Okay, we're right about, we're gonna go to closer to 20. So there we go, there's 20. Let's try the other one. Yep, the other one's around 20 as well. And that's all she wrote, folks, for the, that phase of it. The next phase is to install the belt. The old one. It's a GM belt. There's the part numbers if you want to get the GM version of it. But that's not what we're here for. What we're here for... is why it's squeaking. And when I move it back and forth through the sunlight, you can see there's a lot of glazing on the outside surface. That's what rides on the tensioner. You can also see these really small grooves worn into it from the original tensioner. Or from some other part, maybe the power steering pump, because it also rides on the back side of this belt. Also, on the inside, it's not cracked, and that's usually what fails on these, is you'll see lots of cracks in it. I don't see any cracks, but the belt does feel hard. It's stiff, it's old. And I think in between the grooves, I'm also seeing some glazing. And that glazing will also make it noisy. 
Just being stiff and old though isn't helping either. Now here's a new gator back belt. And it's not quite as shiny. It's a little more dull, but you can also see a texture to it. That texture is very helpful. When it's glazed, that texture becomes smooth and the belt becomes chirpy and squeaky. So you definitely want to see some texture on these belts. And then of course, on the back side of the gator backs, they have all these little notches, but there's nothing shiny in between the grooves there. So this one's definitely ready to go. Brand new belt, should be. I think I showed the part number earlier. For the gator back. And that, my friends, right there is my favorite part of this belt. To install the new belt, just got to kind of feed it through there. Just fold the belt in half in the, in the top here. And in between, up around the alternator pulley. The bottom left part of the belt goes around the AC compressor pulley. The right part of that belt loop goes under the power steering pump pulley, which is that guy right there. And then the only other part goes under the, around the crank. So what I like to do is I like to get all the as much of the tension out as I can. So get it tight around the alternator there. Get it tight around the crank. All seated in the best you can. And around the AC compressor. All right, once you have the belt completely routed like this, it's easier to unhook the belt from the alternator again and just let it hang here like this. Slip it up over the tensioner. Make sure it's seated well around the AC compressor and around the crank pulley. Make sure it's in all its grooves. And loosen the tensioner and work it push down on the tensioner and work it around the alternator. And I usually like to give it a couple of thwacks like this, make sure everything's seated now. So taking a look here, it looks like the crank pulley's not seated. And I think it is. Everything looks like the way it should. All right, let's start it up and see what happens. All right, take two because the camera fell over. All right, everyone, that's the end of this video. I hope this helped someone. Thanks again for watching.
And thanks again for spending some time with me out in the garage. Take care.